Hello everyone, I hope that you all are doing great. This is Dr. Aksa Kamal. The key of any sort of wound healing is the process of angiogenesis. Angiogenesis is a very important and yet a very complicated process. In this video, I will try my best to explain you the process of angiogenesis in a most simpler and easy way. So I hope that you like it. Let us start. Angiogenesis is the formation of new blood vessels from existing blood vessels. It has two types. Number one, is the sprouting angiogenesis that is known for centuries and number two is called as the intersusceptive or splitting angiogenesis that is discovered recently. Let us discuss sprouting angiogenesis in this video. Let us say that this is a tissue that is hypoxic or wounded. There are different conditions that can stimulate angiogenesis. So I will call this stimulating tissue as the angiogenic center to be more common. An angiogenic center releases the pro-angiogenic molecule. This pro-angiogenic molecule is vascular endothelial growth factor, specifically A, that is also called as VEGFA. This pro-angiogenic molecules are released by the absorption of different cells such as macrophages in the angiogenic center. Let me make it more clear. For example, this is a capillary. A single endothelial cell is known to make the entire lining of the capillary. This pink lining with the endothelial cell is the basement membrane. Basement membrane consists of extracellular matrix. And outside of that, other cells are present such as pericyte and fibroblast. The main role is played by the endothelial cells. Let me make the capillary in the longitudinal section. This is the capillary, the endothelial cells, the nucleus and the basement membrane. In sprouting angiogenesis, there is always more capillaries. For example, I will make two capillaries. It is because the sprouts are released from the capillaries. They move towards the angiogenic center and fuse with each other. It all happens with the tip cell selection. Basically, endothelial cells have the receptor for VEGFA. This receptor is called as the vascular endothelial growth factor receptor 2, also known as VEGFR2. This VEGFA and VEGFR2 interaction make the particular cell as the tip cell. After becoming the tip cell, this particular endothelial cell makes a structure on the surface that is known as the phyllopodia. This is how a phyllopodia looks like. Phyllopodia is the long protrusion which protrude and go towards the angiogenic center. Please note that there is only one tip cell. It is because the tip cell also puts another molecule on its surface by inducing VEGFR2. This molecule is called as the delta-like ligand 4 or DLL4. This DLL4 molecules bind to the another receptor on the surface of the neighboring endothelial cells. This receptor is called as the notch receptor. Just note that all the neighboring endothelial cells have the notch receptor on their surface. Like this is the DLL4 in pink on the tip cell, which binds to the notch receptor in green on the neighboring endothelial cell. This activates the notch receptor resulting a flow that acts on the nucleus and stops the formation of VEGFR2 on the other cells. And so the neighboring endothelial cells do not become the tip cells in response to VEGFA. Coming back again, this is the angiogenic center and these phyllopodia release an enzyme known as the proteolytic enzyme that resorbs the basement membrane and allows the phyllopodia to move out towards the angiogenic center. Angiogenic center keeps on releasing VEGFA that continues to bind to VEGFR2 on the surface of the tip cell. Tip cells are filled with VEGFR2. And these are the normal neighboring endothelial cells in yellow. This continuous interaction between VEGFA and VEGFR2 makes the phyllopodia to migrate towards the angiogenic center. But the neighboring endothelial cells will not move. Instead, they will proliferate. This is how they will look. The original cells in yellow are on their place and the new proliferated cells that make a stalk and so are called as the stalk cells will help the tip cells to move towards the angiogenic center. And this is a sprout or the beginning of the sprout. In this way, the stalk cells will keep on proliferating until the tip cell reaches the angiogenic center. I will make another diagram to show you. Now the stalk is taller, the basement membrane is in pink and the original endothelial cells 
are in yellow on their place so the tip cell is moving towards the angiogenic center. I will make another capillary to make it more clear. The site away from the angiogenic center remains the same and does not form the tip cells. Please note that the basement membrane is not present only in front of the tip cell because of the proteolytic enzyme but it is present on the other parts. At this point, there is no lumen present between the newly proliferated endothelial cells and they are fused together, but there are spaces and holes between the fusion. This is called as the vacuole and eventually these vacuoles will combine together to form one huge hole that will make the lumen. This process is called as the tubulogenesis. Finally, when both tip cells reach the angiogenic center, they fuse together to form one tube connection just like this. This newly formed capillary will eventually have the basement membrane around it and then there will be surrounding cells such as fibroblast and pericyte. This video was about the sprouting angiogenesis. I will explain about the second type that is the intersusceptive or splitting angiogenesis in the other video. I have added some references at the end. If you like this video then please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.